actually have amazing guest and a very um, when I say amazing, this is an amazing person. Is a young man. He's a mille millennial, if I'm sure. Let me. He will tell us if, but he's a millennial. Welcome, sir. Carry good media. Thank you. Thank you so much. So maybe tell us your name, where you're from, and what do you do. Are you Kenyan? They are black. Continue that way. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lisa, for hosting me. Yeah, my name is David Dorokot. Yeah, I'm from Embakasi, Sports Agency, Tawala uh, World. Yeah, currently serving as a public assistant to Honorable Babu Ohino in terms of uh, matters of constituency development. Yeah, I'm also in charge of sports, culture, and youth affairs in the same office. And uh, in politics, I'm an ODM strong member and vying uh, as the next incoming chairman ODM Tawala World. Okay, first of all, let me. I'm gonna ask you a question. Thanks so much, David. Um, what is very interesting about the chairmanship? I saw you were campaigning for chairman. We even voted for you. I we thought you won. As far I look at the votes online, what is very interesting for that position? What do you think are the best candidate for that? Yeah, thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, what is so interesting in uh, becoming the chair for ODM? You see, one uh, ODM is uh, the biggest party in the country. And uh, as young people, uh, we want to get into leadership and do what is right for the country. So one of the best means and channels to get into leadership is through a party. So that's why we want to ensure that uh, we build our party for political transparency and good governance. So that from there we can also get a chance to get into leadership. And that's why I want to start by demonstrating it from the grassroots level. Okay. Yeah. okay. So for me, very interesting. In Kenya, we don't have... Uh... We have only mass political parties. We don't have that one. There are three types of political parties. But in Kenya, you don't have that party that could, that welcomes youth. You should have money or maybe funds at least to join a party in Kenya. How did you join? Maybe where did you get the funds? Or do you know you have got fathers in the ODM who connected you to the parties? Because it's really where you find young people being involved in parties. Yeah, after that, first I want to thank uh, Raila Murodi for fighting for multi-partism so that at least now we have many parties where as a young person you can uh, subscribe to a party of your choice but uh, getting into a party you doesn't need money so that you get into a party mm -hmm. you only get into a party when you like the policies and manifestos of that party so me as a young man i think uh, i liked uh, manifest of odm is policies yeah that's why i'm in odm and then uh, getting into ODM, sometimes people say you must have got fathers so for you to be a leader. But me, I want to believe this, you as a young man to get there, fight for your space there so that you can also bring a change. It has been said that young people doesn't have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But I want to say as young people, we must fight, mm -hmm. get into such parties and also have our space mm -hmm. for leadership. Do we, in a sense, you are saying in a sentence that um, we must fight. Does it have to be a fight? If there are ways away, that's the door. You tell me the door here, come and enter. Opportunities here. But we have to fight. Why do we have to fight? You see, we, have a, we are in a country whereby people fight for the limited opportunities. Mm. And sometimes uh, there's a say that I've been going around that the youth are leaders of tomorrow. But if we wait that that tomorrow comes, then the same, same people will not give us that tomorrow. So that's what I'm saying. By fighting, it means we must get there and say our tomorrow is today as young people, so that we ensure that, that our tomorrow works today. So it is upon us getting there and also fighting with the old people who have uh, decided not to exit from leadership. That's why I'm encouraging as a young man that let us just get there, find that space, fight for that space and bring change. Oh, so the fight you are the fight of, let's fight to remove the boomers, the old babies. Uh, the old babies who are there without uh, having to bring okay. a change. But we have seen the other day the president, the president of Kenya, Mr. William Samuel Ruto, instead of giving the Gen Z after all the demonstration, he still chose the people you are saying were the old babies now in the seats. He gave them seats and also positions in government spaces. What is your take on that? One was very unfortunate mm -hmm. because uh, actually the Gen Zs took a very good initiative, patriotism, wow. to fight for the country. No, it was not easy because even some of them had lost lives, a lot of lives. Why? Because they believed in a good cause to build Kenya as a country. 
And uh, if I were Ruto, I would have taken that opportunity to ensure that young people are given a chance to serve in government. So that one was unfortunate, and I think as young people, we need to continue con con uh, condemning such act that we believe young people are the fault for Kenya, they really love Kenya, and therefore the president ought to have given them a chance to serve in the same government so that the change they're fighting on the outside can be inculcated in the government. You say you are a member of Odin Party. Yes. Odin Party, we have seen it being in the mo as opposition party in the country. Yes. And uh, recently we have seen your leader, Raila Morpinga, who is now going to air for AU chairmanship. Yes. Joint hands. I don't know if it is the handshake. Can I say it is handshake? Because this is the handshake in a manner way. They did shake hands initially, but they shake hands in a way they signed mm -hmm. to have one people or one their people to join the UDA grassroots or UDA government. What is your take on that? I've seen Raila Odium Party being the leading opposition party in Kenya. Mm -hmm. What is that is called the broad based government? Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on that? As a subscriber to Odium Party, as a person who believes in Odium. There are many things that uh, must have uh, taken place, but my thought on this is this one. One, Raila uh, is now eyeing for AUC seat. We want to be the chair for Africa Commission. And uh, the first role for you to be chair person, you must ensure that there is peace in Africa. That's the first thing. So Raila could not have uh, encouraged Kenya to be pieces while fighting to create peace in Africa. So the first thing Raila would have done is to ensure that there is peace in Kenya. Yeah. So Raila ensured that uh, he talked to the president so that peace can prevail, to give him an upper chance of fighting for Africa, to make Africa a peaceful continent. That is one. Okay. And there, therefore, that is why, two, Ruto as the president was the person to support Raila for that seat. The government of Kenya was to make a proposal for Raila to be the a chairman representing Kenya. So Raila could not have uh, encouraged people to fight, Jesus to continue fighting, while he's also fighting to make uh, Africa the best continent. So uh, in his position, he was just to come, talk to Ruto, so that we can have peace. And then too, um, when you're talking about broad-based government, you see, there was no handshake in that. Uh, Ruto as a president has got the right to call anybody to government to help him work. So if Ruto found that it was right to call some experts from ODM to make government better, then that one was okay. Raila could not, have, could not refuse. That was on personal ground. So Ruto found it right to bring uh, people in government from ODM. They have gone. Raila had no uh, anything to say about it. So what do we want to say? If those people would come, help Ruto to make Kenya better, so be it. Because what we want, we want a better Kenya for everyone. We don't want people to continue fighting. Because it was even unfortunate after the disease coming out, they were being killed, some were being abducted. That was a, a wrong thing. So if those people could come, go there, make government better, that is fine. So if it is a broad-based government, it's just that some two parties or three parties agree that we can work together for the benefit and interest of the whole country. I think that is what is happening in that broad But ODM is still the opposition party. ODM is still minority in the parliament. So we've not done any handshake, we've not said that now we are doing government. It's just people coming together for the benefit of the country. Okay. I wonder yet if you are the viewer you have seen any benefit from the best broad based government or the handshake that we have seen as Dave has here said. Um David, there's a new funding model that has been brought. We have long days, long time ago we long days. Long time ago we had help. You used help, right? Even the president used help. All of, all of uh, since he entered the seat, he came with that idea of changing the funding model, and he brought a new funding model. What is your view, or you are thinking that it, it will bring an impact to counties and economic development across the country? And what will also your view on the new funding model to families that are vulnerable or the rich? Personal view. And of course, view of the majority that I've talked to. One funding model is a satanic, the way it is brought is here. It's not a good thing. And in fact, we should not even be discussing it. It's something that ought to have been taken away uh, like yesterday. 
Because uh, if you look at the help, of course people had an opportunity to benefit and some of us have also benefited from help. But now funding model, I don't know how they came up with that formula of bands. That somebody is band one, band two, band three, band, mm -hmm. band four, band mm -hmm. five. Because sometimes you find that one, somebody is having two kids, two students at the university. And one is in band one, one is in band five. And the same same parent uh, that doesn't have any source of income. So you find yourself that how did this one get into band one, where a, a parent earns at least 50,000 a month, and the one is in another band where a parent has no income. So you ask yourself, two, they are coming up with bands. They did not even go to homes, uh, consult parents to know whether they are working, they are not working. So I don't, I don't even understand the formula that was used mm -hmm. to come with those bands of knowing that either this one is working, this one is earning 100,000, 200,000, this is not earning. So that thing is not right. And according to me, Mr. President should just ensure, no, there's no need even of forming those committees. That's just waiting public resources. Because I saw the other day, some students were taken from my universities to form that committees on two things. One, to work on the review of the funding model, and two, on the appeals. Because majority were appealing about that funding model. But according to me, Ruto should just stop wasting public funds, Ruto should just uh, do away with funding model, so that we can go to the drawing board and do the right thing. Um, today, that uh, were 25,000 university students have supported that. It was in the news, lunchtime news. Do you really believe that, or uh, which universities are really taking plea to accept the new funding model? And you also have touched on the bans. Which criteria is the government going to use to reach these parents? Because this is a house or this is a family. Which criteria is, is it going to be used? And how long will this criteria work? For these people to benefit in this new funding model, yeah, you, you see the first word, so yes. yeah, and that, that, that is a lie. No, you know, you know the, the government, that government is lying, those are government bloggers. Uh, there's nothing like that, and uh, so that there's nothing totally like that. Two, um, your guess is as, as mine. Uh, the, the formula used for bands, we don't know, we've been trying to ask, nobody is able to tell us. So that's why I'm saying as individuals that we don't understand anything to do with funding model. President has gone to town hall meetings and he is trying to explain something that we don't understand totally. So the best thing on funding model, instead of a president wasting time, town halls, he should just go and do away with funding model. So that we can go back to the funding model, the old funding model. We come down and then now come with uh, uh, something, including public participation. So that Parents, students, we can talk. They can talk to us. Tell us this is what we stand for. We can give our views, and then from there we make something that we for the benefit of everyone, including our children to come. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you think uh, the university student are going to join the college right now? Do you think they will really get qualified? Because if this funding model is there, the criteria they come into you, they say they have a criteria. They have a way to reach these people. Do you think everybody is going to qualify? And how many students are going to be left outside? Or how many youths are going to be left outside without managing to qualify for the new body model? I think this thing is a certain <laughs> Even right now, there are many, many students who cannot go to university. Okay. If you go to our office, mm -hmm. uh, our constituency office, mm -hmm. you, day by day, you get more than 100. Mm -hmm. coming to request for money, mm -hmm. for bursaries, just to join the universities. Mm -hmm. Even right now, most of them, they even don't know whether they will join or not, mm -hmm. because of this funding model. Yeah, it is, it, 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 it is very hectic, and uh, most people are not going to get an opportunity to go to university. Okay. That's why we are saying, if all Kenyans are, are, are given that equal right mm -hmm. to education, then that funding model, we should not even be discussing it. Yeah, we should not be discussing it. President Ruto should just come, do away with it, we go back to the old funding model so that people should get to what? More students should get to school. And then another thing uh, about the funding model, my view was this. Why can't we just do away with this bursary thing? Mm -hmm. That governor is doing but giving bursary, and he's giving bursary, and he's giving bursary. It is hectic. They should just channel all those money to the Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. so that education should be free okay. from primary to university. Okay. Yes, education is just universal free mm -hmm. education, okay. like how Kibaki used to do it. 
So th those person is because somebody is going to university. Mm -hmm. According to the band, you are told that you need to pay around uh, 60,000 per semester. Mm -hmm. And uh, personally for MD is only 5,000. Mm -hmm. How will you survive? You want to survive. And sometimes you are going to university, you are not, you are not even sure if you are going to get that uh, support, that help from government. And your MP is giving you 5,000, your MC is giving you 5,000. Are you going to, find, uh, to, to get it? So the best thing is uh, consolidate this money to one kit for education. Then uh, education should be free from primary to university. Okay. That one everybody will get a chance to go to university. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's hot, it's nice. <laughs> it's our politics, the state of politics in the country. We have seen it's really burning up. We don't know who is who, we really don't know what is happening, but we can see the same same criteria that was between Uhuru Kenyatta and Ruto, it is repeating itself. Or is it a curse? You know, my mom told me when something is repetitive, it's a curse. So how do you perceive the political the political marriage? Or is it, can I say political marriage or the marriage between Kashawa and Ruto? And what implication do you think it has for ODM? And the broader position. I don't know whether it is a curse, but I think it is a it's a curse because if something negative repeating itself, then that is a curse. Of course, it was uh, during a uh, former president Uru Kenyatta yeah. and uh, Ruto. Mm -hmm. um, it was unfortunate that uh, Ruto said mm -hmm. we will ensure mm -hmm. that uh, his deputy will not be intimidated uh, again. Mm -hmm. But again, we are seeing. I I, I even wondered that uh, the other day. Uh, Gachak was saying that uh, one he was removed by a junior officer from the state house uh, or something. Uh, two, he said that he was abused at the airport by a senior government officer, somebody of a caliber of a deputy president. That is very unfortunate. And um, you know that thing, it is uh, bringing a very negative impact to the country or our, our economy. Because when, when, when Ruto and Gachak were elected, they were elected on the basis of um, improving the economic status, political status of our country. And what we, we should be getting from them is telling us on how they are prepared to ensure that Kenya works is a prosperous country. Our economy is very poor. Right now, even if our economy is not doing well, but imagine we are being diverted, instead of discussing how to uh, make Kenya better, we are discussing uh, the differences in marriage between Ruto and Gachagua. At but the same time, these are just PR, you know, politicians. You no, know, even Ruto in the last like last year, last seven years ago, used the same criteria that Gachagua is now using to to be voted to go to to get into state house. Do you think is they are using the same game? Yeah, well, you know, there are two things here. Mm -hmm. I did say that uh, Baba is in bed with Ruto. That is what he said. Okay. And as Baba is going to AU, mm -hmm. he might get it or not. Mm -hmm. Come back. Mm -hmm. But no, in political, we have strategies. One thing might be that we are being fooled that now the government has failed the people. So, you, my deputy, uh, let us assume that the marriage is not working so that you can go back and consolidate your support base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that you, it, you get sympathy from your people. Mm -hmm. So that when the right time comes, mm -hmm. you now join me. <laughs> when your uh, support base is solidified, that is one strategy. Mm -hmm. Because of course you know, everything they promised Kenya mm -hmm. is not working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything between the bottom up economic model is not working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think even central people are asking, our guy is in the government. Huh? We are not getting it right. So I think one, they have sat down like what, what they did during uh, Uru time when Ruto was told to go and uh, start camp early campaigns. So maybe Gachaga has been told, go start early campaigns, a cry fall baby, then from there consolidate, then come up with a team. Or two, perhaps uh, Gachaga is demanding so much, so Ruta has seen now that you are demanding so much, mm -hmm. um, with Baba here, maybe he's trying to form another, another political formation for 2027. Because it is unfortunate that in Kenya here, the ruling party does not form government twice. Do you know that? Yeah, we started once the president is out, it dies. Started from uh, Kanu era, when Moi was out of it, Kanu died. It came to Kibaki, PNU. After PNU, PNU died. It came to Uru Kenyatta, 
with a, a what? It was in between URP and a TNA. TNA. Mm -hmm. uh, it is no longer there. It came to Jubilee. Jubilee is not there. So even uh, uh, UDM might not see in 2027. Yeah. <laughs> what about ODM? <laughs> you, you see, ODM has not died at ODM because ODM has not formed government. Okay. But once ODM will form government, the same same criteria will form. Okay. Yeah. Um, this boy that has been trending recently, a young man. I don't know if it, it's a father, not a, it's a young father. A young father. Uh, his name is Morara Kebasa. What is your take on his recent political moves? And how do you think it affects the opposition, as you know, in the opposition party, mm. ODM, strategy, and the national political scene? Mm. Talking about Morara, one, uh, Morara is a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. I know him. Uh, two, Morada is a young man. Mm -hmm. I want to say he's doing a good thing mm -hmm. because uh, all of us are patriots. We love our country, Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, we should ensure that when we have time mm -hmm. to fight for Kenya and make it better, mm -hmm. you do it. Mm -hmm. So if Morada is coming out to ensure that uh, he's uh, unearthing the wrong wing of the government, some of the projects that the government is, is uh, launching or relaunching, and they're not working, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So we, I want to encourage Morada, one, continue doing what he's doing. Yeah, it is a good thing. But now my question also comes that uh, one, Morara was a good friend to Ruto. And even yeah, after Ruto, was. a good friend to Ruto, and in, in fact even after Ruto had uh, gotten it, uh, the presidency, mm -hmm. Morara used to go around in his seat, mm -hmm. uh, campaigning with Ruto, okay. when Ruto was making such promises. Okay. So I don't know what has changed. Okay. Today, Morala is saying Ruto. Is, what if he's, uh, he's, he's getting mentored? If he was the president, then that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, so those are all some of the things maybe can be told. You go outside there, mm -hmm. get us another base so okay. that when time comes, you can join me. Mm -hmm. But now another thing that uh, Morala, I think, uh, is not uh, getting it right mm -hmm. is um, Morala started it well. Mm -hmm. In fact, even some Kenyans and uh, some people from abroad were supporting the process. Mm -hmm. But uh, be, I think one, what Morada ought to have done, mm -hmm. because he's a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Yes, Morada could have even taken some one or two mm -hmm. projects that are not working to court. Okay. Yeah, because just saying it has not happened, it has not happened and leaving, it is mm -hmm. not helping us. Okay, okay. So, Morada's so what, what, what funds will he use to court it? Because now you're saying it does not happen. I know, even you know, Morada is a lawyer. Okay. He, can, he can go, he take a case himself to court. Two, there are pro bono lawyers mm -hmm. who can also take it up for, for the love of Kenya and uh, pro, uh, litigate it in court so that we can know whether it is true or not. That is one. Mm -hmm. Two, Morada started with the other day. And uh, before we get it right, Morara is saying he's going to register a political party. So it means maybe Morara is using this thing to get into politics. Okay. Yeah, because before before everything works, you are registering a political party, you've started a political office, you want maybe buy for presidency. So it means we will say this thing was not, was not out of goodwill. Okay. Yeah, you are just doing it because you have intended purpose. Okay, see, but well, let me ask you because right now I've seen people uh, making him, comparing him with President Ruto, mm. we Wanjigi, mm. and who is there? There's another person who's trying to vote for presidency, I call the name, and then Morara. Mm. Then people are being told, whom will you choose? And you've seen Wazain Meru saying um, they were really enjoying his presence. Even who are contributing money to him for fuel and all that stuff. Was they, the old ones, they were our, our grandparents mm. to us. Uh, they were really supporting and saying this is going to be our president. What is it about that? Because he's just a man who isn't from anyone. And then yeah. the president. Yeah, I, as a young man, you know, you must support uh, my fellow young, young, young man. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing. If Morana actually has that good will mm -hmm. of changing Kenya, without having another hidden agenda. Okay. Then it is a good thing because you know the government has failed almost everybody. Okay. This government is not working. Mm -hmm. How we wish it to be working in a broad-based uh, system, but it has not been working. Mm -hmm. So if actually Morara would come with clean hands, eh, for, for, for the benefit of the country, even me we still vote for him. I don't okay. have any problem with that. So he should buy for the seat? Uh, if for good in reason, the uh, for it, it, you should just buy. Yeah. Young people should do, go to such seats. So the young man will support him. Okay. I don't have any problem with that. <laughs> but in Kenya constitution, it says it's supposed to be ratified by the bulk so that you can do on the presidential seat. 
uh, maybe those such limitations if they are in the position that they are. Maybe married. by 2027 you will be, we never know. <laughs> he said he's at 28 uh, plus the remaining two years, maybe unfortunate. Oh, he won't make it. Maybe. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, that's a brief vision for us when we get there. Okay. Um, you say that uh, you are Babu Wino, public assistant in yes. the coordination of CDF. Yes. Um, following on the recent recent uh, announcement as the Babu Wino said is the chief of, of, of opposition now in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, Duly to we have seen ODM party being handed over to Anya Minyomo, who is the party leader now, right? Yes. And uh, Babu Wino doesn't have any position. People are really waiting. Where is this young man, the young one? We don't really, let me not say the young one, he's a millennial, right? Mm -hmm. Where is he coming from? Which he does, does he deserve? And another part, um, what do you think it, it means for this means for DM leadership and uh, the party's approach to holding uh, the government accountable? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, thank you so much for talking about uh, Babo Oino. That is my boss. <laughs> so, as I said, I'm a, he's a public assistant in matters of consumer development. Mm -hmm and also running his office uh, for youth affairs, mm -hmm. sports and culture. Mm -hmm. So before I answer your question, I would uh, want to say something about Babo Wino. Okay. Because uh, you see Babo Wino, as a leader, is a very hardworking leader. Okay. All the way from my university when he was a Sony president. Yeah, but there was a notorious leader. <laughs> was yeah. leader. No, no, some, you know sometimes as a young man, mm -hmm. you must sometimes be notorious so that you get it right. <laughs> you see, and you see, Babu Wino is one. <laughs> Babu Wino is a, a leader in Kenya who has been uh, <clears throat> sworn in more times than, in, than even the president. Hmm? Yeah, three since from the university. Okay, they're going to go to the university. I've started from university. <laughs> from you see, and then the MP. You see, okay. that is the second term in B. Mm -hmm. uh, when Babu Wino came to Imbakasist, mm -hmm. most people could not believe in him. Okay. The reason being, mm -hmm. he was somebody just fresh from university. So he was saying, how will a young man of his caliber come and leave the people? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, mm -hmm. politics from the university is a bit different from outside politics. Okay. But uh, once the, the, the guy got in this seat, mm -hmm. in the last five years, mm -hmm. he ensured that uh, he got people's trust okay. by ensuring that there's good road network in the case is. No, there's uh, good schools because okay. the man uh, prides himself in terms of education. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I think he's the most learned member of parliament in Kenya. Most learned. So, most learned. <laughs> so that's why he's ensured that uh, there's uh, schools built in the Bacasi East, okay. uh, equal distribution of bursaries. Mm -hmm. if, if ask anybody around, they will tell you that Babu Wino mm -hmm. comes himself, gives bursaries himself. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, He's the only MPU who can come to the ground, mm -hmm. give people bursary reforms and checks at the same time, okay. from morning to evening. Mm -hmm. So he has surprised many people in Bacasi East has become our republic, okay. a city within a city. Mm -hmm. So that one is, uh, tells you that if uh, Babu Wino is given a chance, mm -hmm. Probability of becoming governor is there because we need to translate what's happening in Makasis mm -hmm. to the entire uh, Nairobi city. Okay. And then maybe later we God knows president for Kenya. <laughs> but when I come back to your question, okay. asking about uh, ODM mm -hmm. and Babu. You see, mm -hmm. Babu as a young man is a loyal to Raila okay. and gets advice to Raila mm -hmm. And uh, when even broad based government was being formed, mm -hmm. Babu has some two hours in close to a meeting mm -hmm. with Raila. Mm -hmm. So they have discussed their issues there. Mm -hmm. So I think Babu, uh, being not given any position in a party, mm -hmm. we are, he's okay with that. As a young man, because sometimes you need to fight for what you think is right, you need not to be given. So Babu has been fighting, he's loyal to the party, ODM party, but if our Raila Mulodinga, Baba, find it's right not to give him anything, maybe Baba knows why. Okay. Baba knows why, okay. but we are loyal to ODM, and that's why when Baba was now going to AU, Babu said that because the role of uh, ODM is opposition, mm -hmm. uh, Babu and say, I'm now going to take the role of uh, opposition okay. and uh, do checks and balances for the government. Okay. So we are happy with that, and uh, when the right time comes for us to be having any position in the party, we'll have. But right <laughs> now, we're okay. Okay, uh, it's uh, thank you. That is what we have so far.